You must be between the ages of 18 and 26. You must have at least one parent who is Jewish. And you must self-identify with the Jewish faith. Nearly two dozen people came out to John McCain's office here in Tucson to give him this letter. Like your labs or Nopal, most startups are software-based, whether it's through a click or a tap. Founders of these young ventures aim to have their product as easily accessible as possible. The family put up this roadside memorial, but just days later, graffiti artist trashes. The family wants to know why. Tucson Mayor Jonathan Rothschild and partnering organizations began working back in June to end veteran homelessness, an effort coordinated by the Obama administration. With the Boston bombing finally resolved, many people are looking to relieve some of the tension from this emotional week here at the Pima County Fair. But Vail and surrounding areas did receive a light coating of snow, a phenomenon not often seen by local residents. This may seem like a large area behind me, but compared to Rolito Park, this is a significantly smaller space. How about a free trip to Israel? Flight, lodging, in-country transportation, and most meals for 10 days all paid for by donors and the Israeli government to help preserve Jewish culture. If we want to have a Jewish people in the future, then we need to turn young Jews onto Israel and have them build their Jewish identity. The trip is called Birthright, and if you are Jewish and are between the ages of 18 and 26, then you are eligible to go on it. But what if you aren't Jewish? You just claim to be. So I think that when it gets down to it, it's really about the honor system. This means that any young adult, Jewish or not, could potentially lie their way through the mild vetting process and get a free $3,000 trip around Israel. <laughs> Jacob Silvers just got back from a birthright trip organized by Hillel this last winter. He says that he could very well see someone lying their way onto the trip and getting away with it. My friends asked me, you know, how hard would it be for me to get on the trip? One of them has the first name of Christian, and I said, well... If you told them you were Jewish, you could probably go, even though your first name's Christian. But I told him the trip wasn't for him and that he wouldn't like it so that he wouldn't try. Despite this not-so-secret loophole, officials don't believe the system requires a change. I guess let's presume in the hundreds of thousands of students who have participated, someone out there didn't tell the truth and landed up in Israel, but I think the system works pretty well. Reporting for Arizona Cat's Eye, I'm Max Effort. It's the day to honor veterans. Many of them are part of today's parade, but the sad reality are the ones who feel forgotten. Oh. The ones you won't find walking in this parade. The ones who feel the country they once fought for has forgotten their service and sacrifice. Jim Scheip was homeless for about 15 years before seeking government support to get by. I tried to make it on my own. It was only after he reached a point of near death that he decided to make a change. I was, uh at the end of my rope, really. I mean, I wasn't quite aware of that at the time, but, you know, I was rescued. Jim is currently enrolled in Hudvash, one of the major housing programs available for veterans. They pay a goodly portion of my rent. Programs like Hudvash are currently being pushed by Tucson officials on many levels. Tucson Mayor Jonathan Rothschild and partnering organizations began working back in June to end veteran homelessness, an effort coordinated by the Obama administration. Tucson was chosen as one of 25 cities to take on this challenge. And so far, Tucson officials have not disappointed. We had a 100-day challenge to house 208 veterans in the first 100 days. We housed 223 plus their families. City officials will need to house more than 1,400 more veterans by December 2015 to meet the president's challenge, a feat that VA representative Jennifer Phillips believes is achievable. We have had bash vouchers available. We have beds in all of our programs available. So I think that's a very realistic goal. Shipe, on the other hand, will only believe it when he sees it. It might be possible, but, you know, that's a lot of people. David Edmonds is no stranger to theft. I've had three bikes stolen, and this is the second place that I've been broken into. This last holiday season, Edmund's home was burglarized. Multiple TVs, game consoles, iPads, and even a microwave, all stolen. So none of it was insured, so we, we lost, like you said, thousands of dollars worth of stuff in total. The burglar got in through this window. 
which Edmonds found open when he got back from his trip. So this screen was popped out and this window uh, behind it was ajar. Even if you're going to be gone for a short period of time, lock your doors, lock your windows. You know, sometimes these crimes are crimes of opportunities. But that wasn't the end of it. The day after he returned, what he suspects was the same robber came back for more. I heard uh, the front door open. Edmonds went to go see what it was and saw a man wearing a hoodie and face mask standing in his front room. And as soon as I encountered him, I yelled at him and told him to get out of my house. And he immediately turned around, went out the front door and booked it west down 6th Street. This is Riley Brennan. He was a victim of theft as well two years ago when his TV was stolen. About 18 months later, though, the thief got caught trying to pawn the TV, and Brennan got it back. I had given up hope. I think I, I, after about two or three weeks after it had been stolen, I just thought it was gone, you know? And then totally out of the blue, a year and a half later, I was able to get it back. Police say the best thing you can do to protect yourself is to make your home look lived in at all times and to install a security system. For Arizona Cat's Eye, I'm Max Efron.